the hybrid crawdad. Start with a size 6 or 10 700B Dairiki hook. Size 6 is good for bass and size 10 is good for trout. Mash the barb down with a pair of flat jawed pliers. You can also do this with any kind of 4X long streamer hook. Just at the one third section behind the eye of the hook, bend it up at a 15 degree angle. This will help make the hook ride point up when you put lead on the bend. Grab some 35 thousandths lead free wire. Go to your hook and wrap the area of the bend with lead wire until you reach the eye of the hook. It's usually about 10 or 12 wraps. Push the tag end down. Now go ahead and load a bobbin with 6 out rusty brown uni thread. Start your thread behind the eye and take wraps through the lead wire to secure it to the bend of the hook. Then go ahead and cut the tag end of thread off. Take a couple more wraps of thread to really secure that lead in place. And then end your thread at the spot right behind the lead. Grab a section of crystal flash and root beer. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again over your thread. Bring it on top of the hook and splay it out over the hook shank. Make sure two fibers are on either side of the hook. They should be right on top in between the hook point and the hook barb. Cut them off at a hook shank in length and cut the inner two fibers half that length. Go to your barred rubber legs. Grab one fiber. Go ahead, fold it over your thread and bring it on top of the hook just as before with the crystal flash. Bring it to either side and cut it to the length of the longest crystal flash length. Go to your Swiss drill. At the crease, cut a section of it off and unfold it, revealing a little translucent piece of straw. At an angle, invert your vise and tie it now on the inverted top of the hook. Make sure it encompasses the whole body of the hook and that it folds over well and will cover the whole body of the next tied fly. Now go to some SLF dubbing here in brownstone. Make a small dubbing noodle about an inch or two and create a little small ball right in front. This will help splay out the claws. Then go to your pine squirrel. Select a zonker strip and free it from the rest of the hide. With a spare hook or the hook already in the vise, measure a piece of the hide that's about the bend in length. Separate the fibers and cut that measurement off. Then do this to another piece. This will create two claws. Now, grab one claw and place it on the far side of the ball of dubbing. And do the same to the near side. The points should be facing past the bend. Once that's secure, go ahead and grab another little pinch of dubbing and build up another small dubbing ball right behind those claws to really push them up and splay them out. Go to your chickaboo pelt. Go to one of the far sides and select a fairly long piece of hackle, one with a lot of well-marked fibers. Go to it and strip off most of the fuzzies, but leave a couple. This will help create a body of the fly. Now, separate the tip from the rest of the feathers. This will be our tie-in point. Now, with the shiny side facing up, tie in the little triangular piece tip on the top of the hook. Now create a longer noodle with the same dubbing as before. Spread out the dubbing and create a about a three to four inch noodle. Now take touching wraps up to where you get to the crease of the hook and anchor your, th anchor your thread there. 
Then go ahead and take your hackle, and with open spiral wraps, wrap till you run out of hackle, and measure it so that when you run out of hackle, the bare stem will touch weight right by your thread. And once you reach that point, go ahead and tie the stem off and cut it free. You should wind up with about five or six turns of hackle. Now go to some medium ultra wire and unravel it about four to five times. This length will create numerous flies. Now, dog ear the wire, making a sort of hook and hook it around your thread. This will help keep it from pulling out during the wrapping process. And go ahead and tie it, pushing it towards the hackle. Now go ahead and cut off another section of Swiss straw and spread it out just like before. But this time, stick a section of it off over the hook eye. This will represent the tail. The length should be about a hook gap in length. Then end your thread right behind the hackle. Create another dubbing noodle. This will be the thickest dubbing noodle of the whole fly. Although it may look disproportionate, we will be picking a lot of this out and it will slender up. Now, go ahead and make touching wraps all the way up until you reach the hook eye. You may need to twist it on there as we put an ample amount of dubbing on and it may want to untwist as you wrap. Now, push the hackle fibers to either side and fold the swish straw over the hole of the fly and wrap it down right where your thread lays behind the eye. Separate that little clump, tag end and cut it off free. I drop my scissors. Now with the wire, go ahead and start ribbing. About five turns is good. Open sprouter wraps from the hackle to the eye of the hook. Tie it on on your sixth wrap. Make sure it's really secure. This medium wire is tough stuff. Go ahead and helicopter it off. After that, go ahead and whip finish your thread. Go ahead and cut your thread free. Now, go ahead and really aggressively knock out all those fibers, making sure not to damage the Swiss straw in the process. And then after you hit it with a dubbing brush, go ahead and prick it out even more with a bodkin. This will create a nice little bulky fly. And then after that, go ahead and coat the carapace in Sally Hansen's. This will increase the durability of the fly. Make sure to touch the thread wraps too. And that's it. That's the fly.